population of 15 to 30,000 human beings. This quarter consists wholly of narrow alleys and square courts, in the middle of every one, of which there lies a dung heap. Revolting as was the outward appearance of these courts, I was yet not prepared for the filth and wretchedness within. In some of the sleeping places which we visited at night the superintendent of police, Captain Miller, and Simons we found a complete layer of human beings stretched upon the floor, often fifteen to twenty, some clad, others naked, men and women indiscriminately. Their bed was a litter of mouldy straw, mixed with rags. There was little or no furniture, and the only thing which gave these dens any shimmer of habitableness was a fire upon the hearth. Theft and prostitution formed the chief means of subsistence of this population. No one seemed to take the trouble to cleanse this Orgean stable, this pandemonium, this tangle of crime, filth, and pestilence in the center of the second city of the kingdom. An extended examination of the lowest districts of other cities never revealed anything half so bad, either in intensity of moral and physical infection, nor in comparative density of population. In this quarter most of the houses have been declared by the court of guild ruinous, and unfit for habitation, but precisely these are the most densely populated, because, according to the law, no rent can be demanded for them. The great manufacturing district and the centre of the British islands, the thickly peopled stretch of West Yorkshire and South Lancashire, with its numerous factory towns, yields nothing to the other great manufacturing centres. The Woolen district of the West Riding of Yorkshire is a charming region, a beautiful green hill country, whose elevations grow more rugged towards the west, until they reach their highest point in the bold ridge of Blackstone Edge, the watershed between the Irish Sea and the German Ocean. The valleys of the Air, along which stretches Leeds, and of the Calder, through which the Manchester Leeds Railway runs, are among the most attractive in England, and are strewn in all directions with the factories, villages, and towns. The houses of rough grey stone look so neat and clean in comparison with the black and brick buildings of Lancashire that it is a pleasure to look at them. But on coming into the towns themselves, one finds little to rejoice over. Leeds lies as the artisan describes it, and as I found confirmed upon examination on a gentle slope that descends into the valley of the air. This stream flows through the city for about a mile and a half, and is exposed to violent floods during thaws or heavy rain. The higher western portions of the city are clean, for such a large town. But the low-lying districts along the river and its tributary becks are narrow, dirty, and enough in themselves to shorten the lives of the inhabitants, especially of little children. Added to this, the disgusting state of the working men's districts about Coke Gate, Marsh Lane, Cross Street and Richmond Road, which is chiefly attributable to their unpaved, drainless streets, irregular architecture, numerous courts and alleys, and total lack of the most ordinary means of cleanliness, all this taken together is explanation enough of the excessive mortality in these unhappy abodes of filthy misery. In consequence of the overflows of the air which, it must be added, like all other rivers in the service of manufacture, flows into the city at one end clear and transparent, and flows out at the other end thick, black, and foul, smelling of all possible refuse, the houses and cellars are often so full of water, that they have to be pumped out. And at such times the water rises, even where there are sewers, out of the minter cellars, 40A engenders miasmatic vapors strongly impregnated with sulfuretted hydrogen, and leaves a disgusting residuum highly injurious to health. During the spring floods of 1839 the action of such a choking of the sewers was so injurious, that, according to the report of the Registrar of Births and Deaths for this part of the town, there were three deaths to two births, whereas in the same three months, in every other part of the town, there were three births to two deaths. Other thickly populated districts are without any sewers whatsoever, or so badly, provided as to derive no benefit from them. In some rows of houses the cellars are seldom dry, in certain districts there are several streets covered with soft mud a foot deep. The inhabitants have made vain attempts from time to time to repair these streets with shovelfuls of cinders, but in spite of all such attempts, dung heaps, and pools of dirty water emptied from the houses, fill all the holes until wind and sun dry them up 40 b an ordinary cottage in Leeds occupies not more than 5 yards square of land, and usually consists of a cellar, a living room, and one sleeping room. These contracted dwellings, filled day and night with human beings, are another point dangerous alike to the morals and the health of the inhabitants. And how greatly these cottages are crowded, the report on the health of the working classes, 
quoted above, bears testimony in Leeds we found brothers and sisters, and lodgers of both sexes, sharing the parents' sleeping room, whence arise consequences at the contemplation of which human feeling shudders. So too, Bradford, which, but seven miles from Leeds at the junction of several valleys, lies upon the banks of a small coal-black foul-smelling stream. On weekdays the town is enveloped in a grey cloud of coal smoke, but on a fine Sunday it offers a superb picture, when viewed from the surrounding heights. Yet within reigns the same filth and discomfort as in Leeds. The older portions of the town are built upon steep hillsides, and are narrow and irregular. In the lanes, alleys, and courts lie filth and debris in heaps, the houses are ruinous, dirty, and miserable, and in the immediate vicinity of the river and the valley bottom I found many a one, whose ground floor, half buried in the hillside, was totally abandoned. In general, the portions of the valley bottom in which working men's cottages have crowded between the tall factories, are among the worst built, and dirtiest districts of the whole town. In the newer portions of this, as of every other factory town, the cottages are more regular, being built in rows, but they share here too, all the evils incident to the customary method of providing working men's dwellings, evils of which we shall have occasions to speak more particularly in discussing Manchester. The same is true of the remaining towns of the West Riding, especially of Barnsley, Halifax, and Huddersfield. The last named, the handsomest by far of all the factory towns of Yorkshire and Lancashire, by reason of its charming situation and modern architecture, has yet its bad quarter, for a committee appointed by a meeting of citizens to survey the town, reported August 5, 1844 it is notorious, that in Huddersfield whole streets and many lanes and courts are neither paved, nor supplied with sewers nor other drains, that in them refuse, debris, and filth of every sort lies accumulating, festers and rots, and that, nearly everywhere, stagnant water accumulates in pools, in consequence of which the adjoining dwellings must inevitably be bad and filthy, so that in such places diseases arise and threaten the health of the whole town. If we cross Blackstone Edge, or penetrate it with the railroad, we enter upon that classic soil on which English manufacture has achieved its masterwork, and from which all labour movements emanate, namely, South Lancashire with its central city Manchester. Again we have beautiful hill country, sloping gently from the watershed westwards towards the Irish Sea, with the charming green valleys of the Rubble, the Iwell, the Mersey, and their tributaries, a country which, a hundred years ago chiefly swampland, thinly populated, is now sown with towns and villages, and is the most densely populated strip of country in England. In Lancashire, and especially in Manchester, English manufacture finds at once its starting point and its centre. The Manchester Exchange is the thermometer for all the fluctuations of trade. The modern art of manufacture has reached its perfection in Manchester. In the cotton industry of South Lancashire, the application of the forces of nature, the superseding of hand labour by machinery especially by the power loom and the self-acting mule, and the division of labour, are seen at the highest point, and, if we recognise in these three element, that which is characteristic of modern manufacture, we must confess, that the cotton industry has remained, in advance of all other branches of industry from the beginning down to the present day. The effects of modern manufacture upon the working class must necessarily develop here most freely and perfectly, and the manufacturing proletariat present itself in its fullest classic perfection. The degradation to which the application of steam power, machinery and the division of labour reduce the working man, and the attempts of the proletariat, to rise above this abasement, must likewise be carried to the hardest point, and with the fullest consciousness. Hence because Manchester is the classic type of a modern manufacturing town, and because I know it as intimately as my own native town, more intimately than most of its residents know it, we shall make a longer stay here. The towns surrounding Manchester vary little from the central city, so far as the working people's quarters are concerned, except that the working class forms, if possible, a larger proportion of their population. These towns are purely industrial, and conduct all their business through Manchester upon which they are in every respect dependent, whence they are inhabited only by working men and petty tradesmen, while Manchester has a very considerable commercial population, especially of commission and respectable retail dealers. Hence Bolton, Preston, Wigan, Bury, Rochdale, Middleton, 
Haywood, Oldham, Ashton, Stalybridge, Stockport, etc., though nearly all towns of 30, 50, 70 to 90,000 inhabitants, are almost wholly working people's districts, interspersed only with factories, a few thoroughfares lined with shops, and a few lanes along which the gardens and houses of the manufacturers are scattered like villas. The towns themselves are badly and irregularly built with foul courts, lanes, 